only God knows. Jesus spoke of God Almighty as my father and your father, my God and your God. But the real and crucial acid test came when he was asked, what is the first of all the commandments? He said, the first of all the commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Therefore you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy spirit, and with all thy strength. This is Islam. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prostrated himself, fell to the ground, put his forehead on the ground, and he prayed to God. That is how Muslims pray to God. The core expression of faith in Islam is La ilaha illallah, no deity to be worshipped, but the creator of heaven and the earth, the one and the only God. Jesus, peace be upon him, not only taught, not only believed, but he practiced an identical doctrine. In black and white, in the book of John, chapter 7, verse 3, we are told that Jesus said, eternal life is to know the only true God, only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou have sent. As a Muslim, I am assured that my belief in Jesus is not the byproduct of theologians, is not the byproduct of man-made theological doctrines or counsels. As a Muslim, I am comforted and assured that my belief in Jesus is the correct belief, not only from the teachings of the Quran, not only from the teachings of Muhammad, but from the lips of Jesus, the man that is highly respected, highly honored by the Muslims and by the Christians. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. When we, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll ask Dr. Gleason Archer to respond to that and give us the proof in the scripture that points to God taking on the form of a man. Stick with us. All right, we're back, and uh, I hope that you're enjoying this discussion. We're talking about the comparison between Islam and Christianity concerning the person of Jesus Christ. Christianity claims that he claimed he was God and then gave proof that he was God by the resurrection. We're going to talk about the resurrection next week, but this week we're talking about the claims. And Islam says he did not claim to be God. He wasn't God. He was just a prophet, a revered prophet, but a prophet only. Now, Dr. Gleason Archer, uh, the question that has come from the other side is, what can you point to as evidence in the scripture that Almighty God took on the form of a man and was both God and man? Where does it say that in the scriptures? The passage that comes to my mind foremost is in Philippians chapter 2, where we read, beginning at verse 5, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed with the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped after, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the only hope of the world. This is the only solution how God could be just and the justifier of the ungodly. It had to be a substitute who could suffer the penalty in our place. And it had to be an adequate substitute, because being God as well as man, he was a sacrifice of infinite value. And I would like to come to the other side and say okay. this. With the clear references that Gleason gave, he could give others, especially the Egoi Me, which is a direct reference to Yahweh. Adonai and Elohim were other words used for God that were applied to men in the Old Testament, but Yahweh, the I Am of Exodus 3, is never ever used of anybody but God. And Jesus took that title and applied it to himself at least four times in John 8. 
It's what do you do with that clear cut reference? If to I may add here to what you said, John, there are two kinds of I am in the Greek. There is ho own, that means the existence, and this is the one that you will find it in the Old Testament in which God Almighty referred to himself. There is ego eimi, which means I am, like I am tired. What I'd like to do is stick right on the verse of, I'd like to come, you and your book, Dr. Archer, have said that you think that Muhammad got close in terms of talking about Jesus, but he really missed the main essence. Why do you say that? Because Muhammad did not realize the necessity of a mediator between God and man. If God is to remain just and the justifier of the ungodly. You see, the problem in the uh, Quranic concept is that God can simply forgive anybody he pleases, no matter what his crimes may have been. And uh, all of the sanctions of the moral law can be disregarded. Well, suppose you had a judge like that in criminal court, and rapists and robbers and all kinds of uh, criminals should be brought before him, and uh, suppose the criminal said, well, um, yeah, I'm sorry, I did it, and especially I'm sorry I got caught. Um, then the judge would say, well, that's all right then, I forgive you. No. That judge would be the most valuable ally that organized crime could possibly find in all of society. But Dr. Archer I'm, is... I'm I saying that until you have an adequate punishment for sin, you are undermining and destroying the sanctity of the moral I law. I respectfully take ex John. two exceptions oh, no, to no, what no, uh, let's Dr. Let's, let's let them answer. The question is, how can Allah be just, which you say that he is, and holy, but how can he be merciful mm -hmm. and just at the same time? How can a judge say, here you've no broken problem. the law... We will cover that as a uh, subject of salvation. We'll cover that in salvation, we are but covering we give a brief answer. Well, to satisfy you right give me a question. brief answer right now, if all you right. would. I'll answer you right now. No problem at all. No problem. First of all, I'd like to correct Dr. Archer respectfully. No, no, give, all right, we'll, we'll come back to that. Give me one final comment, because we're out of time here. Give me a final comment on what about this evidence where Jesus claimed he was God. It's in there. What about it? We don't believe that Jesus claimed to be God. Many scholars indicated that the words were put in the mouth of Jesus. Even the New Catholic Encyclopedia say this. The Jesus Seminar, of course, you don't agree with them because they are so-called liberal scholars. 80% of the words attributed to Jesus, they concluded, are not likely to have been said by Jesus. So there is a big dispute within the Christian community itself as to whether the word was put in the mouth right. of Jesus. But right. your problem what? is, you say 40 times a day, Allahu Akbar, and your God is too small to do what he wants to do. Why do you limit him? You say he's almighty, and the dilemma is this, he cannot become man. Very if simple. I'm your friend, I may write you Very in a letter, I may talk to you, I may come to you. What Bravo, limits Charles. he comes in the person of a man? Gentlemen, what gentlemen, thank you for this week. <laughs> next week, <laughs> next week, we are turning your to God another... Is too small. That's the problem. ...to another controversial topic in the debate, and that is, did Jesus, was he actually crucified on the cross? as Christianity says, or was he not crucified? Did he not die? Did he not resurrect from the dead, as Islam says? So I hope that you'll join us.